Hello everybody. Our lesson for today it's the graph of the polynomial function. But first of all, let's see what does a polynomial function mean. Polynomial function it's the function that has a rule a polynomial. And the standard form of the function is f of x equals an x to n plus an minus 1 x n minus 1 plus a2 x square plus a1 x plus a0 in which the most important term it's the first term which is called the leading term the leading term it has two parts it has the coefficient a n which is called leading coefficient And it has the variable part in which x has exponent n, and n represents the degree of the polynomial. The leading coefficient a n, it cannot be equals to zero. So if it is not equals to zero, then it can be positive real number, or it can be a negative real number. The degree n, it is also not equal to zero, and this is a positive integer different than zero. So if it is a positive integer different than zero, then n it can be one, two, three, four, five, and so on. From this positive integers, some of them, they are even numbers, and others, they are odd numbers. So the degree, it can be even, which means 2, 4, 6, and so on. Or it can be odd, which means 1, 3, five and so on the end behavior of the function it is given by the leading term So we will take in the leading term all of these possibilities together. So we'll start with the first one. When the leading coefficient it is positive, and the degree it's even. The, the end behavior of the function, it will be up, up. For the left side of the graph, we will write x approaches negative infinity, then y approaches positive infinity. So that we can describe the y, then follow the arrow. If the arrow goes up, it means that the y approaches positive infinity. If it goes down, approaches the negative infinity. For the right side of the graph, x approaches positive infinity, then y approaches positive infinity too. When the leading coefficient it is positive, and the n, the degree, it is odd number, then the end behavior is down, up. So for the left side, we will write x approaches negative infinity, then y approaches 
The arrow goes down, so we will write negative infinity. For the right side of the graph, x approaches positive infinity, then y approaches, the arrow goes up, so positive infinity. But not always the leading coefficient, it is positive. It can also be negative. So leading coefficient, an less than zero, and the degree is even. Both of the ends of the graph, they go down. For the left side, x approaches negative infinity. Then y approaches negative infinity. And the right side, x approaches positive infinity. Then y approaches negative infinity. And leading coefficient less than zero. And the degree, it is odd number. Then the end, the end behavior, the ends, they will be up. Down the left side, x approaches negative infinity, then y approaches positive infinity. For the right side, x approaches positive infinity, then y approaches negative infinity. The degree of the polynomial. helps us in finding the turning points of the graph. So I will write TP for turning points, which it, it is equals the degree minus 1. Let's see. On page 137, we have question 18. Write the polynomial function in standard form. In standard form, it means we have to put the fact, we have to put the terms in order from the greatest exponent of the variable into the least exponent of the variable. So let's have a look. Here, x, exponent 3, exponent 5, 3, 4, and 2. The greatest exponent, it's in this term. So we will write f of x equals, we'll put this term, the first one, less than 5, it is 4. We look after term that has x exponent 4 and it's this one, so plus x4. Less than 4, we have x cubed, we have it here and here, so we collect the like terms and we can simplify them. Negative 3 plus 8, it's a positive 5 x cube. Less than x cube, we have the x square minus 3 x square. Less than x square, it is x, so plus x. And the free term is negative 6. So this represents the standard form of the polynomial. For each function, find the degree and number of the terms. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the polynomial has 6 terms. Remember that terms are separated by plus or minus operations. And we can say that the 6 terms are 2x5 x4, 5x cubed, negative 3x squared, x, negative 6. The degree, it is given by the greatest exponent for the variable, which is 5. So n equals to 5. And the leading coefficient a n is... The coefficient of x5, which is 2. In this case, 5 is odd. And the leading coefficient, it is greater than 0 positive. So if you remember, the end behavior, it will be 
down, up. Let's try more. So the standard form is from the greatest exponent for the variable into the least one. Here we have exponent 3, 1, 4, and 2. So the greatest exponent is in this term. We can write f of x equals negative x to 4. Less than 4 is 3. So the next term is here, negative x cubed. Less than 3 is 2. So the next term is positive 5x squared. Less than x squared, x. So plus 9x. And the free term, which is 12. The polynomial has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. As we said before, the most important term is the first one that contains the greatest exponent for the variable. This is called the leading term. In which the leading coefficient, it is negative 1 and the degree, it is 4. In this case, negative 1, it is less than 0. 4, it is even. So both of the ends of the graph, they go down. So x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Use the leading coefficient and degree to determine the end behavior. Already the polynomial it is given in standard form. So the most important term, it's the term that has the variable at its greatest exponent. So the leading term, a n x n, in this case is negative x to 5, in which negative 1, it's the leading coefficient, and the degree, it is 5. Negative 1 less than 0, and 5, it is odd number. So the end behavior, it is up, down. For the left side, x approaches negative infinity, y approaches, the arrow goes up, which means approaches positive infinity. For the right side, x approaches positive infinity, y approaches, the arrow goes down, which means approaches negative infinity. Already the polynomial is in standard form, so the leading term, a n x n, is 7 x to exponent 4, in which the leading coefficient it is 7, which means it's positive, and the degree it is 4, where 4 is an even number. So degree even and leading coefficient positive, the end behavior is up, up. For the left side, x approaches negative infinity, y approaches, the arrow goes up, so positive infinity. For the right side, x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. The leading term, a n x n, is negative x to exponent 6. The leading coefficient, it is negative 1, and the degree, it is 6. Negative 1 less than 0, and the degree, it's even number. So the end behavior, it will be down, down. For the left side, x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity, because the arrow goes down. For the right side, x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. The graph shows the function. The function it is given in standard form, and the leading coefficient, Leading term, sorry, is x4, in which 
the leading coefficient a n it is one greater than zero and the degree it is four wherefore it's an even number let's see in question five we have to answer the number of the terms. We know again that terms are separated by plus minus operations. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five terms. In six, the degree, which we said is four. The leading coefficient, it's the coefficient for x4, which is 1, which is positive. The end behavior, as long the leading coefficient is positive and degree it is even, the end behavior, it will be up, up, which means x approaches to negative infinity, y approaches to positive infinity. And for the right side, x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. The turning points, they are given by n minus 1, where n is the degree, and in our case, degree it is 4, so it's 4 minus 1, which means 3 turning points. The x-intercepts, they are the zeros of the functions, which means the points where the graph intersects the x-axis. And this is the symbol for the x-intercept. And these ones, we will take them from the graph. So the points where the graph intersects x-axis, as you can see, are negative 4, negative 2, 1 and 3. Relative minimum, the graph has two relative minimum. The relative minimum is given by the lowest point in the graph. We have a relative minimum here and the other one here. So we can write relative minimum. The point has coordinates negative 3 and let's say approximately it's a negative 25. So we can say approximately negative 3, negative 25 and there exists one more here. It's approximately 3 and negative 25. 2. Sorry, it's a 2, approximately. So here, yeah? So it's a 2, negative 25. And the last question, relative maximum. The highest point that we can see it in the graph, which is here, and has coordinates, if this is 2, negative approximately, we can say here, because we cannot say exactly from the graph what is the x-coordinate, but it's like a negative 0 0.5. And the y-coordinate, it's like, a, let's say, a 28. Compare the rate of change of the function f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 1. The average, the rate of change, I will use the symbol rate of change. Between the two points is ratio f of a minus f of b 
to A minus B. So the two points coordinates A, F of A, B, F of B. We can do it like this or we can say F of B minus F of A over B minus A. Always the interval represents the x value. So we are going to find two rate of changes. One for this interval and one for this interval. So I'm going to take the interval separate. First of all, the interval 0, 2. Remember that interval always represents the x values. So from here, x equals to 0 and here x equals to 2. So if we know the x, then let's find the y. So f of 0, it will be equals. So x0, to find the y, we go back into the function. And wherever there it is x, we will put 0. So it will be equals to 1. And f of 2 equals, we substitute for x in the function, we put 2. So it will be 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 squared plus 2 plus 1. And this equals 8 minus 8. So this is 0. And 2 plus 1 is 3. So the average rate of change in this interval, it will be f of 0 minus f of 2 over x0 minus x2. And this equals f of 0, we found it 1, minus f of 2 is 3, and 0 minus 2, it's a negative 2. And negative 2 to negative 2 equals to 1. So, in the interval 0, 2, the average rate of change, it is 1. We will calculate now the average rate of change in the other interval. Just let me change the slide. So, f of x equals... x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 1 in the interval 2, 4. Again, interval, it is given for x value. So from here, x is 2. Then f of 2, we already calculated in the previous question. f of 2, we got it 3. And x equals to 4 f of 4 equals 4 cubed minus 2 times 4 square plus 4 plus 1. So it will be 4 cubed, it is 64, minus 4 square, 16 times 2 is 32, plus 4 and plus 1 equals 237. So 37 represents the average rate of change in the interval 2, 4. As you can see, the average rate of change in this interval, it is greater than the average rate of change in the interval 0, 2. Thank you.